scripture reading for today will be Luke 9, 23, and Luke 23, 26. And he was saying to them all, If anyone who wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. When they led him away, they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, coming in from the country, and placed him on the and placed on him the cross to carry behind Jesus. Hopefully I can do this because it's kind of got a tickle in my throat, but it's, it doesn't feel bad, but it sounds bad. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I, to me, this given given an opportunity to to share the God. This is for me. A lot of times when people say share the gospel it's like trying to convert somebody but i think we got to keep sharing the gospel with each other all the way through and this this lesson i have here is it's kind of a refurbished lesson because tom several weeks ago talked about we got to carry our cross we are to carry carry the cross ourselves. You know, each Jesus carried the cross for us all, but we have to carry our own crosses to be faithful. And so, I I said, well, I have a lesson that follow that up pretty good. So I I'm going to present it now. It's a refurbished lesson, but. I presented it quite a while ago, and probably the only one who may have heard it before is Mom, Betty. <laughs> okay, it's Simon. <clears throat> I got lots of time. This probably should be vinegar or something. (laughs) Can you hear me all right? Simon of Cyrene, a man who helped Jesus carry his cross. To start off the thought of the message I would like us to consider here, I go to Luke 9.23, which expresses to us what Jesus says, which is, he says, he says, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Also in Luke 14, 26 through 27, which says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So we can see that if we as individual persons truly want to follow Jesus and be true disciples of his, that it is very important and necessary that we each, each deny ourselves and let go of the world completely, not hold anything back, and carry our crosses daily daily, crucified to the things and concerns of the world daily. 
For it says in Galatians 5.24, Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Also, in Galatians 6.14, Paul says, But may it never be that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. At this point, I would like us to remember and consider the scene and try to picture in our minds what Jesus went through on the day he was crucified. Let us try to empathize or put ourselves in his place, seeing it from his point of view. For this I go to Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Now when morning come came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and they led him away and delivered him to Pilate the governor. Governor Pilate asked <clears throat> the people what they wished for him to do with Jesus. And the Jewish people shouted out, they said, let him be crucified. Let him be crucified over and over again. Pilate himself found nothing worthy of death. Yet the people strongly desired that the innocent Jesus be crucified, crucified. So Pilate washed his hands of the matter, declaring that Jesus Christ's innocent blood was on the hands of the Jewish people and not on his. In Matthew 27, 25, it says, And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. His blood be on us and on our children. Then Jesus was scorched. He was beaten so that his flesh was torn and bleeding. They stripped him of his clothing, put a scarlet robe and a crown of sharp thorns upon him. They mocked him, they beat him on the head with a reed, spat upon him. Then they tore the robe off him and led him away to be crucified. Can you picture the whole abusive scene? Can you picture the whole abusive scene? Luke 23, 34, but Jesus was saying, he said, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Then as he was carrying his heavy wooden cross to a place they called Golgotha, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon whom they pressed into service to bear his cross. Matthew 27, 33. We don't know much about this man, Simon of Serene. In Mark 15, 21, it tells us he was just a passerby from the country who was a father of two sons. In Luke 23, 26, it says that when Simon was pressed into service, to carry the cross, that he bore the cross behind Jesus, behind Jesus as they carried it together, together. We need to remember that Simon of Cyrene was behind Jesus, following Jesus, following Jesus, helping Jesus carry his cross to be crucified. But at the same time, we need to remember that in a way, or a real sense, that Simon of Cyrene was carrying his own cross, and that Jesus was in front of him, helping him bear the burden and the weight of that cross. Every step of the way, they were, every step of the way, they were both taking up the cross together, 
united with one spirit and painful effort together. They were carrying the same cross to the top of that hill together. Let us return to picturing the scene of Jesus and Simon carrying that heavy old rugged cross to Calvary, which is a Greek translation of Golgotha. They were both sweating, straining, and struggling in pain together. Simon was not physically crucified with Jesus, the Christ, as Jesus in his physical body was nailed to that cross that he and Simon carried to Calvary. Christ alone was physically crucified for Simon and for every true disciple and follower of Christ that carries that cross daily. For every true disciple and follower of Christ that carries that cross daily, all true disciples of Christ are of one spirit, you might say, with Jesus. In a sense, we were crucified with him spiritually in this one spirit and sacrifice with him, in this one spirit and sacrifice with him. The Ephesians letter, and specifically Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, tells us about that, starting with verse 3. Verse 3 says, being diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. This is also you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We, as faithful Christians, were crucified with him on that cross. We, as faithful Christians, were crucified with him on that cross. We need to make sure we remember, understand, and know what that means. What Jesus Christ did for us. What being a true disciple of his means. <clears throat> that means that we, as true disciples of Christ, are crucified with him and are not any longer the ones crucifying him, nailing him to that cross. It is a, com a communion, a one communing spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, one communing spirit with him. But the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. But the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Galatians 2.20 my favorite scripture, Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me, and he gave himself up for me. Now to emphasize and demonstrate this a little more, I will go give some vivid examples and thoughts a true Christian may need to remember and be aware of in living the faithful Christian life. In living the faithful Christian life, we need to remember that every single time a person, a Christian person included, gets angry and may shout at his or her brother or sister, children, father or mother. You have just shouted, let him be crucified. Let him be crucified. Every time you strike out at someone, insult or offend them, or say negative bad things about a person that may not be true, you have slapped Christ Jesus across the face. You have spit on him. You have mocked him. The questioning thing is concerning some of this is as, as 
faithful Christians, we do have a priority list of do's and don'ts. Is your heart and mind occupied and truly focused on the truth of the Bible, Christian principles, attitudes, the Beatitudes of the Bible and the Lord Jesus? Or is it occupied with the spiritually negative garbage and the very worldly views, attitudes, philosophies, ideas, seen, found, and pushed, promoted on TV, magazines, radio, and fiction novels and politics, politics that the world enjoys and pushes at you daily, daily. There are Bible study tapes, books, and Bibles that need to be read, used, and understood and applied faithfully to help you help us be a true disciple and follower of Christ Jesus. A follower of Christ Jesus that is actively seeking and growing as a spiritual person. You are a spiritual person, individual Christian person, personally and collectively with the Lord's spiritual body together, together in Christ or with Jesus Christ as Lord and headmaster. He's our headmaster. That is far better than letting Satan and the world and those worldly ways take hold and dwell in your mind and heart with violent, with violence, world philosophies and values, immoral, immorality and negative points of view, which can unknown, unknowingly or even knowingly influence and creep into your life so gradually. And easily without you or maybe anyone else really noticing or putting it out to you. Remember, every time you put someone or something else first, before Christ, you have turned down an opportunity to share the burden of the cross with Christ Jesus. And everything you say or do before doing it, you need to take the time to ask yourself truly and truly consider, who am I? Who am I? Am I, am I the one who has his hand nailed to the cross with Christ Jesus? Or am I the one who has his hand on the hammer adding one more blow to the nail in your innocent brother's hand? Remember who you are. Remember who you are. You are a Christian, a faithful follower of Christ Jesus our and Savior, a child of God. You are to wear the name Christian and you are to wear, wear it faithful and true, making him daily to be truly Lord of your life in him, in him. Understand what that means and truly, really act like one in spirit and in truth. Truly, really act like one in spirit and in truth. As the Apostle Paul says and encourages in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he says, be imitators of me, just as I also am of Christ Jesus. Be imitators of me, just as I also am of Christ. Also, what Paul writes and says encourages in Romans chapter 6 and 8 are very good and appropriate too. Now to be moving along with this, if you can't really picture Jesus, since we are in a real sense all one in spirit and in Christ, picture me, picture me, Joe Blow Christian from Idaho. Joe Blow Christian from Idaho. And remember, Every time you may choose to say or do something to hurt someone else or even a child of God and deny my brother Jesus Christ, you have just stuck a piercing spear 
in both of our hearts. For I know many times when I see, hear, or come to know of people hurting each other and themselves and themselves because they are not putting Christ first due to selfishness, lack of knowledge and understanding, or for whatever reason, in a way I know that it still hurts me too. Just like I know that it hurts the sympathizing, always compassionate, compassionate Jesus, the Christ, our innocent brother and very, very true friend, who, he, our Redeemer, who paid it all in tears, sweat, and blood upon the cross, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. He paid the price as the perfect, unblemished, sacrificial lamb of God for all his true disciples and followers who are doing their best to follow his example. He paid the price as the perfect, unblemished, sacrificial lamb of God for all his true disciples and followers who are doing their best to follow his example and the faithful example of those who seek to be faithful to him in the Old Testament and the New Testament times. The gospel, the good news is the victory and the beautiful fact is true that all his true faithful disciples are also partakers of the resurrection and the newness of life, eternal life in one spirit with him. Are also partakers of the resurrection, the newness of life, and the eternal life in one spirit with him. As he says, we must take up the cross daily, deny self, crucifying ourselves to the world, and faithfully follow, faithfully follow Jesus, like Simon of Cyrene was, pressed into service to do and did, having the opportunity, walking in the light, that marvelous light, the marvelous light of his footsteps, sharing the burden in one spirit and one combined effort, sharing in the victory and the resurrection to a new life, a new life in Christ, a new life in Christ forevermore, forevermore. That sounds good. Let our lives be focused on our Lord Jesus. Let our lives be focused on our Lord Jesus and be headed in that direction forevermore, forevermore. On our spiritual journey, personally and together collectively as a spiritual family. Let us stop and not be crucifying Jesus and his true faithful disciples, but rather dedicate or even rededicate our lives to crucifying and condemning Satan, Satan and the world influenced by his worldly ways each day. Let's be united as, spiritual as his spiritual body. Let us be united as his spiritual body and choose to do our best, our, our absolute best each day to give Christ Jesus and Simon of Cyrene a helping put into service hand in carrying that big old rugged cross to the top of that Calvary Hill. We need, we need to do it daily, like Paul disciplined, buffeted himself day, daily, he says. We need to be united, work together in a united effort to lift and move up that hill. Or even it may seem like a mountain, but we a mountain at times, but we gotta help him get it up there to the summit goal and the heavenly home for all of us who be faithful Christians. And let us not have some get on top of the cross, 
being a hindrance, adding their weight to the burdensome cross. That is to be carried. It is to be carried to the top of the hill. Be an active part of the solution and victory effort. Be an active part of the solution and victory effort and the celebration, not a part of the problem, a stumbling stone and a burden for others or for the rest of our fellow pilgrims. Remember to keep your eyes and ears open and focused on Christ Jesus, who is with us, he is with us, walks right in front of you and us, helping to direct and to guide your steps, our steps, prayer, prayerfully, prayerfully, as you carry that cross up the hill and the valleys of life and help crush, crush Satan and the world he deceives, he misguides, and he leads astray. And they, be, and they may be robbed of true life, spiritual and eternal life, that is. I will close this off with some words Jesus spoke to us in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. He saith, Come to me, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble at heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my load is light. He says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble at heart and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my load is light. Galatians 2.20 again. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me, and he gave himself up for me. He, he is our Emmanuel. He is with us in doing this. Now there is a songbook hymn that we sing, which is very appropriate here to close out this sermon lesson message. Its title is in Psalm 395. He says, follow me, saying, I followed down a lonely road, and no one seemed to care. A burden on my weary back had bowed me to despair. I oft complained to Jesus how folks were treating me, and then I heard him say so tenderly. He said, my feet were also weak upon the Calvary road. <clears throat> the cross became so heavy I fell beneath the load. Be faithful, weary pilgrim. The morning I can see. Just lift your cross and follow close to me. Follow me. Follow me, him, Jesus. The second verse says, I work so hard for Jesus. I often boast and say, I've sacrificed a lot of things to walk the narrow way. I gave up fame and fortune. I'm worth a lot to thee. Then I hear him gently say to me, he says, I left the throne of glory and counted it but loss. My hands were nailed in anger upon a cruel, cruel cross. And now we'll make the journey with your hand safe in mine. So lift your cross and follow close to me. Then we have verse three, verse three. Oh Jesus, if I die upon a foreign field someday, could be no more than love demands. 
no less could I repay. No greater love hath mortal man than for a friend to die. These are the words he gently spoke to me. He said, if just a cup of water I place within your hand, then just a cup of water is all that I demand. But if by death to living they can thy glory see, I'll take my cross and follow close to thee. I'll take my cross and follow close to thee. Matthew 10, 38. He who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Simon of Cyrene, a man who will help Jesus carry his cross. How about us? How about you and I here today? Are we willing to carry our cross with Jesus? That's the question. Now, see, I'm pointing at, there's a finger pointing at you, but there's three fingers pointing at me. And the thumb, the thumb points to the power, the almighty God, the power. So we need the almighty power to and he, he's provided a way that we can be saved, that we can have a, a relationship with him, and we can be good people, good people who spread the good news. And, but we have to apply it and worship in spirit and in truth, or else people will come in here and say, oh, a bunch of phonies. No, they come in here and they see we're genuine. We're the genuine article. We want to follow Jesus, and we want to carry our crosses with him. Our sins were forgiven, nailed to the cross with him. He's our Emmanuel, and he took all on himself as Emmanuel and nailed to the cross. But then we got to do the same thing daily ourselves, or else what he, what he did may not pay for our, our souls. But only those who take their cross daily and follow him, then we know we don't crucify him again. He is crucified with us. We can come have the song of invitation now.